for um, verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now before I get started, I just want to give you a few more scriptures. Because this, this, this blessed right here, it's, it's a deep one. You know, you just read it, it don't really seem that way. But once, once I started studying and the Lord was throwing these scriptures at me, I was like, hmm. So, 1 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. All scriptures. And I'm sure we all believe that in here. That all the scriptures are inspired by the Lord. Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change on his words. In Malachi, he says, For I am the Lord, I change not. And then Amos 3.3, 3, Can two walk together, except they be agreed? Believe it or not, that's a deep ver verse right there. How can you walk with the Lord if you're not in agreement with him? And then Isaiah 55.8, This is one that we always need to remember. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And that's that verse is, if we can comprehend that verse right there, because we have our ways. <laughs> we have our ways and it's like, well, Lord, I know if we, if we do this way, you know, we seem to get off on that a lot of times when we just got to depend on the Lord. Just have to depend on Him. Now, the blessed... Are they which hunger and thirst? This follows poor in spirit, the mourn, and the meek. Do you get these three? Do you understand what we're talking about in, in uh, about being hunger, hungry and thirsty for the, the Word of God? Like I said, these Beatitudes, all of them, they all fit together, and they all mean one thing. That's your spiritual walk with the Lord. It's not like... Blessed are they who mourn. It's not talking about people who die or something and you're mourning over that. This is all spiritual stuff. The Beatitudes have to do with all spiritual, your spiritual walk. If you got those three, this one's the next one. When we're hungry and we're thirsty, who's going to feed us? We know who's going to feed us. We depend on the Lord. We depend on the Lord. Most of us depend on the Lord. You know, we hunger and thirst, but who are we going to listen to? Who do we listen to? Now, there's a lot of books, a lot of books out there written by a lot of people. There's only one book I've read other than this, and that was Sedu Seduction of Christianity by Dave Hunt, I believe his name was. Very good book, very, very good book. I had the wife, when we got married, I told her about it, and I said, I'd like for you to read this book. And it talks about philosophies of men and all this stuff that's just creeping into the church getting away from the Lord, from the Spirit, and more to men's ideals and what they think and their theories of... And that's happening. So it's an old book, but it's it uh, has a lot of uh, truth in it. Now, that's the only book I've ever read besides this. Yeah, Christians today, we really we, we, we need to read our Bibles because there's too many wolves out there. Too many wolves out there. And... If we just go on, well, I'll just let the pastor do the study and let him teach me. There's a lot of pastors out there out there who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, who are giving their opinion on the scriptures. Uh, when you're led, oh yeah, when you're led by the Spirit, it's coming from the Lord. It's coming from the Lord. Like, like I say all the time, you know, we're blessed to have the pastor we have. But a lot of churches don't have a man of God up there, a lot of them. So we need to we need to read the scriptures. In fact, this is what this lesson is going to be on. That we need to read them. Christians are lazy. Are lazy. They don't want to read. They don't have time to read. They'd rather just have a teacher or a preacher tell them what the Bible says. This blessed right here. This is what uh, we're going to be learning. In Psalms twenty five nine, it says the meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. Now, like I said, the meek, okay, we've already learned what meek is. You know, we've learned what that is, and that's that's who's he who who he's gonna teach. The meek are the ones they're the ones who are gonna be hungry. Once you do the poor in spirit and the morning and the meek, you're hungry for the word of God. Like I said, when you mourn because you, you you've sinned against the Lord, you you, you wanna know what's in here. 
so you, you know not to do it again. Now, right here it says the meek. So it's talking about us. And he, he will teach us. And it's very beneficial, very beneficial for us to get, to get God's, not his, his instructions, to get his divine instructions. This is divine. This is holy. Not this Bible. This is just a book and papers. But the words in here, this is divine, holy words of God. You know, we got to recognize that. This is not just a book, you know. This is, <laughs> I'm not sure I can explain it. This is the Word of God here. This is it. And this is what we need to read. Without His directions in life, without knowing what this is, says, without knowing what the Lord wants for us, I guarantee you, this is a guarantee to y'all, our lives are going to fail. So we, we need to know the Word of God. We need to read. We need to read. We have to believe what His Word says. We have to believe what's in here. Just like I read up here, this is from the Lord. And we have to believe this because in Luke one thirty seven, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Through these words we have to have faith in them. We have to, we have, to have faith that everything that, that is in here is from the Lord. And just like it says, nothing's impossible with Him. Because in Hebrews 11.6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. The Word of God says it's impossible to please the Lord unless you believe what's in here. You have faith on, on the Word of God. I always like to show you scriptures to show you what, um, what it means. You know, those who hunger and thirst. I always like to use the scriptures to explain the scriptures. And in Exodus 33, it, the chapter, it talks about Moses. You know, he had a tent outside the camp. And they would gather together and they would come to him with whatever and, and they'd meet. And that's where the Lord would speak to Moses. The Bible says that, uh, that, that Moses met him face to face in that verse. But in verse 20, further down, it says, no one can see God and live. So when it says face to face, it doesn't mean actually face to face physically. It just, he's seen the, just like the bush, he's seen the back end of the Lord. Nobody can see God face to face. And like I said in verse 20, it says that. But, if, but reading this chapter, that wasn't enough for Moses. That wasn't enough for Moses. I mean, here he is talking to God in the Spirit, talking to God. But that wasn't, a, that wasn't enough for him. Further down in Exodus, in chapter, I mean, verses 13 and 14, he says, Now therefore, I pray thee, if I find grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. That I, may, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. So Moses, not only did he, you know, I mean, here he was speaking to God in the tent, but that was, like I said, that wasn't enough for Moses. He, he said, Show me, show me your ways, Lord. Moses was hungry to know about, about his father. He wanted to know more. You know, he... He wasn't satisfied with just, I mean, you would think speaking to the Lord, <laughs> you know, you can't get any better than that. But no, Moses was hungry. He was hungry. He says, Lord, show me more. He said, I want to know more of your ways. Once we learn his ways, like right in verse 14, and I will give thee rest. That's what the word of God does. It gives us rest. And in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. So, of course, we know he's talking about the Jews when they went out into the wilderness. They just, they didn't listen to the Lord. And right here the Lord says, because of that, because they wouldn't put their eyes on the Lord, he says in verse 11, they shall not enter into my rest. We have to put our eyes on the Lord, on the Lord, and obey Him. Not just put our eyes on Him, but obey Him. If we want this rest from the Lord. And this rest from the Lord... 
There is no man that can give you that kind of rest. Part of what I'm talking about, we, we have to have faith in the Word of God. When the Lord leads you, like with me, my job I had with Coastal Spray, I was a district manager for here and in Lake Charles. I had a good job. I mean, I was a supervisor and had many men under me, knew everything about my company. I mean, I, I did sales. Everything, every position in that company, I did it. I was in it. And during the summer, when you're not spraying, I was the welder and the burner. I would repair equipment. I mean, I did. So my boss wanted to to expand to either Dallas or Austin, and he wanted me to go and start it, to go out there. And at that time, my father was still living. I said, uh, I said I can't go. I said my mother and my father, you know, my my dad's not doing good, and they're old, and I need to take care of my parents. And he told me, and I thought this hurt me more than anything because I was pretty close to my boss. I mean, we worked a lot together on bids and stuff. And he told me, he said, well, if you don't go, you either take it or else. And I couldn't believe he said that to me because, like I said, I thought we were, there's no loyalty in the company. Well, anyway, I prayed about it, and the Lord showed me. He says, no, I want you, my words say, the man, the oldest elder of, of the male takes care of the family. And that's why they get half of whatever is, uh, if the father dies, biblically, if the father dies, and just say the 12 sons of Israel, if the father dies, well, the oldest son gets half, and they split the other half with the, ele with the other 11. And I'm the oldest son here, and so I told my boss, I said, uh, I can't go. I said, my, my, I have to take care of my parents. And I, I did that because I knew if I obeyed the Lord, He would take care of me. I mean, I've been having this job for a good while, making, you know, decent money. And uh, He let me go. I, I couldn't believe it, but He let me go. And I found another day. He blessed me with another job. In fact, He blessed me with another job where I was making a little bit more than what I was making with them. But I did what God, I felt God in His words wanted me to do. And we got to believe that. You know, how many men, and I'm sorry, but how many men would leave their families to go work somewhere else just so they wouldn't lose their job? That's not God's way. That's why I say you, we have to have faith in the Word. We have to have faith. Now, if the Lord tells you, I mean, He tells you this is what I want you to do, okay, you do it. But the, 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 the father in a family is the most important figure in that family. Without him, the family's going to fall. Because, I mean, the Corinthians plainly says, the head of, the, uh, of Christ is who? God. And the head of man is Christ. And the head of woman is the man. So the, the Lord put the man, in, that's why we're called the head, and that's why he called us the priest. Because we're supposed to lead our, our wives and children. We are. And we're off, go somewhere else, go off somewhere to work and leave the responsibility to the wife, to the mother. That's not God's way. And it's all through the Bible. It's all through the Bible that way. But the thing, what I'm saying here, we have to have faith in this. I mean, this is what I've read. This is what I've, you know, like studying. I'm, I mean, I, this is what the Lord wants. I know. So I took a chance of losing my job, and I did lose it. But the Lord blessed me. Like I said, in fact, He didn't only bless me. I started making a little bit more money than what I was making over here. But I stood on His words. Lord, I know this is what you want me to do. I'm not going. So it's going to be up to you now to take care of me, you know. And he did. He did. And we have to have that kind of faith. We have to have that kind of faith. You know, the easy stuff to have faith in, there's really not too much faith there. There's a lot of stuff we have faith in, but it's small. But to say, well, Lord, okay, I, I know this is your will. It means I'm going to lose my job, but I know this is your will, and I'm going to believe it. That's not easy to do. That's rest when you believe in the Word of God. That's why I stood, before I got started, I want to make sure that we believe that this book was inspired by our Father. This book right here. Yes, it was written by men, but it was inspired by God to them on what to write. So if you want God's rest, believe in the Word of God. Believe it and obey it. Don't just believe it, but you have to obey it. In Psalms 94... Verse 12 and 13. Blessed is the man whom thou chastise. 
O Lord, and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. I did a teaching on God's rest. It's called God's rest. If we want to get rid of our ulcers, our depression, and stuff like that, these kind of sicknesses, we gotta we got to learn how to, to live by the Word of God. We need to believe on what he says here. We need to believe it. That is, I mean, he says it here. That's You want God's rest? He'll give it to you. Where you can go to bed at night and you can sleep. I mean, you might have all kinds of problems over here. But when you believe in God and you trust him to take your problems and handle them, that's a rest. That's a peace. That's how they say it. That's a peace that passes all understanding. Believe me, I had to learn that. <laughs> I had to learn that. But in Psalm seventeen fifteen, this is what Moses wanted. It says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake with thy likeness. Moses said, I want to be like you, Lord. That's what, that's what was going to satisfy him, is being like the Lord. And how are you going to be there like the Lord if you don't know what this is? This is the only way we're going to find out what's being like the Lord. This right here. And this is like I said, Moses had all this, but his hunger was, I want to be like God. I want to be like the Lord. That's what, that He was hungry for that. He wasn't satisfied that he was the head over, over Israel. He wasn't satisfied with that. He wanted more. He wanted the Lord. He wanted to know all his ways. And we as Christians, are the same. we should feel the same way. We should. Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Now this is the way we should feel as Christians. Like I said, those who who mourn, this is how we should feel about sin. Psalms 119, verse 37. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Father, I want to know your way. I want to know your way. I don't want to... You know, get me away from this sin, because I want to know your ways. In fact, the Living Bible says it, Turn my eyes from worthless things, and give me life through your word. Do we know this is where our life comes from? This is our life. Not these books that are written by other people, which I, there's probably some good books out there. I don't, I'm not putting them down. But like I said before, I go to the main book. I go to the one they got all of it. Everything they've said... They've got it from here. So I go straight to here. I mean, why should I read it second hand? Right? I read it here. I get it straight from the Lord. And I said, don't. I'm, I'm not putting down these other books. But this is the way I am. I like to read it here. Alright? But he says, turn my eyes away from worthless things. And, and give me your words, Lord. Give me your words. Hebrews 4.15 the high priest of our understandings, <clears throat> excuse me, the high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same tests we do, yet he did not sin. Like I said before, I believe it was last week, just because we look at Jesus and we say, well, that was Jesus. No, Jesus was just like us. He was 100% man. And if he could do this, then we can do it. And we're not going to be sinless like him because we were born into a, a sin nature. But Jesus didn't have the thoughts that we have. Now, when my thoughts start going where they shouldn't go, right away I have to, okay, Lord, you know, I have to get them out. But Jesus didn't have these thoughts. He didn't have them because he wasn't born of man. He was born of God through a woman. And then Psalms 107, verse 9, For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. The hungry soul. I really, this, this one right here, those who hunger and thirst. This, this, this teaching right here, the Beatitudes, and I'm going to say it this way, it's going to separate those who are true born-again Christians, those who really want to walk with the Lord and, and, and be Christians, Christ-like, from, from the ones who are just satisfied. You know, there's, going to, there's people out there who are just satisfied by getting saved. They get in the door, and that's it. They don't go no further. They don't want to know what all the blessings the Lord has for them or how they want. 
You know, we get born again, and we're those who really give their life to the Lord. Okay, we get in the door, but that's as far as we go. You know, we don't we don't take this and 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 uh, look at it as this is my life. This is my life. You know, there's many of us who who do that, and and this teaching here, the Lord, gosh, uh, good thing she's not home when I'm studying. Because I'll be, I'll be hollering at her, come here. Because the Lord shows me, I mean, He just, uh, that's why I love studying. In Isaiah 44, 3, He says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. When we're thirsty, right here, when we're thirsty, He's going he's gonna to give us to drink. Not only does He say that, now read the last part of this verse. And my blessings upon thy offspring. Our children are we going to receive blessings. That's what he's saying right here. Our offspring, that's our children. Now if we hunger for the word of God, it's going to pass on down to our children. That's what it's saying right here. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. I mean, I know we all love our children and we all want them to grow up in the Lord. Well, right here the Lord says, hey, when you're hungry and thirsty for me, I will pass it down to your children. It will pass down to your children. This is from the Word of God. John 6.35 And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now the two main words here are come and believe. Those of us who come to the Lord and those of us who believe in the Lord will never hunger and never thirst. That word believe right there means you've trusted, you've committed yourself to Him. That you believe, that you believe Him and obey Him. So we got to come to Him and we got to believe. And when we do that, when you come to the Lord, I mean really come to the Lord and you really believe in, the, in His words, we will never hunger and we will never thirst. Coming to the Lord, which we ought to know, is repenting. Repenting of the way we were going, the way that we were living. We were sinful and we were, were still sinful. And we were rebellious. Now he takes, that, he takes that away. He doesn't take all the sins away. But we no longer commit sins with joy in our heart. With, with pleasure. Just like I said earlier. Now our sin, should, we should have a mourning over our sin. Where before, our sins didn't bother us. But now that we're born again Christians, our sins should bother us. When we submit to the Lord... When we submit to the Lord, submission, it's, it's, it, that's a big word. When you say, I, the Lord, that God, Jesus Christ is my Lord now, that, that totally means now he, is, he tells you what to do. He tells us what to do. It's no longer we're our own boss. The Lord's our, our boss now. He tells us what to do. He's our Father. He directs us. And when He does, <laughs> amen, it's good. Believe, like I said, believe is totally trusting in the Lord. Total, I mean, totally trusting in the Lord. If we, if we do these two things, come to Him and believe in Him, we will be hungry for His, for His Word. We'll be hungry. We should be hungry for this. This is our life now. Remember, we were dead. We were dead. And He gave us life. Right here it says it. I am the bread of life. He gave us life. Now, we got to see, okay... Well, what kind of life is this? We can get born again, but unless we read this, well, what kind of life do I have now? You see what I'm saying? We need, we need to read this. And that's one, something I'm going to be really pushing, uh, is that we need to be hungry. We need to be hungry. These lazy Christians, I don't want to get mad or anything, but we should read the Word of God. The Lord gave us the Holy Spirit. He didn't give just the pastor the Holy Spirit. He's given all of us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to interpret what His Word says. You know, if we don't have a pastor, that doesn't give us the right, to, well, I guess I'm just not going to learn anything. The Lord's not going to put up, He's not going to put up with that. He said, I gave you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach us. So that's why we should be hungry and thirsty. Hungry and thirsty, so we will know. We will know. And what does it mean to be hungry? I mean, what does it mean, the word righteous? 
hunger and thirst after righteousness. What is, what is this right, righteousness? Well, it's pretty simple. The word righteousness just plainly means being right with the Lord. Being right with the Lord. And we know what being right with the Lord is. Is walking with Him. Obeying Him. And we do these things. That's what makes us righteous. So we hunger and thirst after righteousness. Being right with God. Being right with the Lord. Is by reading and believing His words. If you're not born again, you don't have God's righteousness. If you're not a born again Christian, you do not have God's righteousness. And we know that. Because His word says so in Romans 3.10. It says, as, as it is written... There is none righteous, no, not one. So without the Lord, without being born again, you do not have the righteousness of God. You're not right with the Lord. And right here it says, there is none righteous, not one, until you become born again, until you give your life to the Lord. Up until then, there is none righteous, none. Jeremiah seventeen nine, to human heart is most deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who really knows how bad it is so the Lord is saying our heart our hearts are are desperately wicked until we give it to the Lord when we give the, our hearts to the Lord he takes that wickedness and he turns around he uses this you're, you're probably going to be tired get tired of hearing me saying it but this is it this is it right here this is the only way we're going to know this is the only way we're going to grow is by His His instructions. And what kind of instructions are they? These are holy, divine instructions. Holy. I mean, they are from God. The God who created the heavens and the earth. The God who created us. These are His words. I'm afraid sometimes we might look at the Bible as just, just another book. Oh, yeah, it's the Bible, but it's just another book. No, this, this is God's words. His words. He don't... Now... He does speak to us, some of us, well, those who know how to listen to him. You know, people say, well, he spoke to me and he spoke to me in that still small voice. Well, you know, uh, I can't explain it, but I know when the Lord speaks to me. I know when he tells me yes or no or whatever. You know, a lot of times he does it through this because I, I read the scriptures and the scriptures tells me yes or no. But there's there's been several times when I, I mean, it was just, I, I just have to say it with the way they say it, that still small voice. I heard the Lord tell me no or yes on something. And that's the only way to get there is how? Through reading His Word. How are you going to know His words if you don't read them? If, you don't, if you're not hungry for them? What's right for us without the Lord? What we think is right without the Lord? His, what we think is right without His righteousness is His power. You know, people who don't walk with the Lord, they depend on their own righteousness. What they want is power. And what comes with power is money. Money is important to a lot of people. A lot of people think they're, they're failures if they don't have money. They like, they like being praised. They like the glory of men. They like being popular. They like being accepted. That's what, to some people, that's what's being right, is having a, a lot of friends, being popular. Some people live for that. Another thing is material things. Material things is the same thing as money. People think if they don't have material things or if they can't keep up with the Joneses, they're not doing right. When you, get it, when you try to keep up with the Joneses, that's not the Christian way. That is not the Christian way. And pleasure. Their pleasures. I know my pleasures, my pleasures in life before was me. Whatever made me happy, that's what my pleasures was. If it made me happy. If I hurt somebody else, and I was just talking to someone today about that, the way I used to be, and I told this person, I said, I wish, I wish I could go back and apologize to all these people I just took advantage of because I was a big jerk. I wish I could do that. Cause, I mean, here it is this many years later, and because I have the heart of God now, it, may, it really makes me feel bad the way I used to treat people. I wish I could. But the Lord has changed me, and praise God, He changed me, I tell you. Because I was not a good person. In John chapter 7, 
verses 37 through 39. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, what's living water in the Bible? Living water is in the Bible. It's talking about the Spirit. Jesus is, is our living water. So it's talking about the Spirit. Now, right here where it says it's flowing out of me, that's, that's Jesus. You've heard about it being be filled with the Spirit. Okay, when we get born again, we get, the Spirit comes in us. We're born again. But then there's an overflow right here. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The, the Spirit just, I mean, you can see it in a person. They're just filled with the Spirit. Okay? And this is what is being filled with the Spirit. It's, I have a teaching on, on the Spirit, how there's, it's the same Spirit, but the Spirit comes in us when we're born again, comes in us. And then for some of us, it just stays there. But with some of us, and this is what, it, this is what happens when you let the Spirit out, your light shines. When you let the Spirit come out, flow out of you, now your light is shining. See how that goes together? So there, it's the same Spirit. There's not two Holy Spirits, but you have one. You have it that comes in you when you get born again, but then it's up to you if you let it flow out of you, like living water being filled with spirit. So that's when people can see there's something about that person. That person is different. That's because they're seeing, they're seeing the light. And that's the way we should live. We should be light in the world. And I've talked about that. A light on uh, a city on the hill can't be hid. Well, if our lights are shining, darkness can't hide it. I don't care how much darkness is out there. You can't hide the light. We should always be hungry for the Word of God. But you know, there's the wicked are hungry too. The wicked are hungry. Satan, he hungered. He hungered for thirst to be like God. Satan wanted to be like God. That, that was what he was wanting. He was hungry and thirsty for that. And the Lord said to the devil, in Isaiah 14, verses 13 through 15, it says, For thou hast said in thy heart, now this is God telling the devil what he was what he wanted. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt thy throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud and I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Everything that the devil is saying right here, it's I. I will do this and I, I, I. The devil is thinking only of himself. He's hungry and thirsty, not to be like God, but to be above God. But he was hungry and thirsty for this. So his hunger and his thirst was to be over God. All right, that's what it shows right here. The devil wanted to do his own thing. And when I say it that way, I'm saying it that way because we need to watch ourselves. Are we doing what God wants us to do? Or are we doing our own thing? Christianity is 24-7. 24-7. It's just not on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights. When you don't hunger to be like the Lord, you're filling your fleshly desires. That's what it leads to. If you're not hungry for this, and this is what's being right, if you're not hungry for this, then the other side of this is you're just, you're just filling your own desires. Your own fleshly desires, that's what you're doing. In Matthews chapter 10, 35 through 39, I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or your daughter more than me, then you're not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Now these are hard verses to take. But she knows God comes before her. My children, my daughters, who I'm crazy about. I love my daughters to death. But they know God comes before them. 
Right here, the Lord says, if you're putting some, in fact, where it says your enemies will be right in your own house, household. Well, the enemy is those who uh, that are in your house that are not Christians. Or it also could be that you're putting them above the Lord. We do have people who put their family, whether it be children, husband, wife, before the Lord. Okay, and I just I'm, that's why I wanted to. At the very beginning, we believe this is the Word of God. And I just read the Scripture. And these are the Scriptures. And the Lord says, if you put anyone before Him, you're not His. So we need to... If we're... I use in this Scripture so I can say, you know, a lot of times we're too busy to read, to study the Word. And it's because family stuff. Especially for the man. For the man, we're, it, this is very important for us. Because like I said, in, in God's eyes, the man, we're supposed to be teaching our wife and our children. We are. And how are we going to teach them if we never have time for this? Or those who work all the time, just so you can have material things. How are you going to read this so you can give time, give it, teach your wife and your children? We need to word, read the Word of God and see what's important to Him and forget what's important to us. I mean, I say that because I, that's what I've had to do. I've had to forget what was important to me. I want to know what's important to the Lord. So that's, especially men, especially men, since we're the priest of the house, the head of the house, we need, to, we need to know, we need to know the Word of God. And wives, when the Bible says, go ask your husband at home if you have any questions, ask him at home. If she's got a question for me and, and I don't know it, well, I'm going to get it. Because the Bible says, hey, go ask your husband. Ask him whatever it is, you know, this verse or whatever. And I'm going to have to find it. Because that's, that's what the Lord, that's my responsibility the Lord has given me. But it's not only, I mean, it's very important for the men, very important. But it's for all of us. We all should be hungry, hungry for the Word of God. And if we're putting, I mean, if you're putting your family before the Lord, well, I didn't study today. I didn't read the Word of God today because I had to take this one that way and I had to do this or my job and blah. Whatever you're putting before the Lord and you don't have study time, I just read the scriptures to you. You have them right there in your hand. Go home and read them again. If, if we're guilty of that. If we're guilty of it. That's, this is, I don't ever apologize for what God says. I don't apologize for it. He says it. I'm going to teach it. And right here he's showing me, hey, nobody comes before me. Nobody. Your mother, your father, your children, they don't come before me. Because if they do, then you're not mine. If, it's, if this is the reason why we're not having time to read, then we need to ask the Father, Lord, help me to make the time. Show me how, how I can maneuver it where I can have time with you. Because I do have to hunger and thirst for this. Because my, fam my family depends on me. Just like when we first got married, I was going to non non-denomination non church, and she wasn't real comfortable there. And I have to take that in consideration, you know, because she's my wife now. So I said, okay, well, so we left the church, but I didn't feel the Lord leading me anywhere. So, and this is how my CD ministry started. It was my responsibility to see that she still got the word and me, and this is how I got started. I, was, I started. Having sermons on Sunday morning, we would have church Sunday morning, just me and her. I would get us during the week. I'd study and have get a little sermon that the Lord gave me, and I would preach to her, just me and her. Why? Because that's my responsibility, and that's how my CD ministry started. Because I, then I started, I started taping them. At the time, it was cassette players, so I started taping them on cassette. So that's how I got started. But I'm pointing out is men. We need to make sure our wives and children are getting fed. We need to make sure. And for them to get fed, we need to get fed. Being hungry for the Word of God, being hungry and thirsty, this is the only way we can be Christ-like. Because I know you come on Sundays, you hear the Word of God by the pastor, or you come on Wednesdays and whatever teacher you go to, you hear that. Well, if you're only getting fed twice a week, there's no difference in that than eating physically. Physically, we need to eat every day. But well, the same thing spiritually. If you want to be a strong Christian, you need to eat. You need to be fed the Word of God every day. Every day. 
the cost of being a, a, a Christian, a, a, I mean, a born again, true Christian who wants to live for the Lord, is we got to give up everything. We got to give up everything and say, okay, Lord, I was this way, but now I'm born. I'm a new creature. Now show me how I'm supposed to do things. Because I've been doing them my way, but now you have to show them, show me how to do it your way. And that's the way. That's the way we should think. That's the way we should look at it. Just like born again, born again means you're like a baby. You're you're learning a totally a new way to talk, walk. That's why it's born. That's why it says born again. And Luke chapter eighteen verses twenty two through twenty three. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him. Yet lackest thou one thing, sell so all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was a very rich, he's talking about the rich man here, like I said a while ago, people hunger for material things. That's, and just like they hunger to be rich or to have things, that's the way we should be spiritually. I hunger for this. I want to have as much as this as I, as I can. Now, not just for me, but so I can tell others about it. Satan and this rich man, they were hungry. But they were hungry for the wrong things. They were hungry for power, for praise, for possessions, and for pleasure. That's what their hunger was for. But we as Christians, this is what we hunger for. In, in the past... When we, when we were the old man, we, we probably wanted these. This is what we wanted, to be popular, uh, to have power. But now the Lord says, no, now we're meek. That's what we are now. Now we're meek people. Now we live for Him. John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These are things we we needed to get rid of. Because I'm sure we all had these things. Whatever pride of life, you know, I'm sure we all had that before we came to the Lord. The lust of the flesh, well, we know what that means. That's just sexual sin there. The lust of the eyes, that's wanting what other people have. The pride of life, the pride of life, well, in Romans 12, 3, it says, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's what the Lord says. We shouldn't think our, of ourselves more highly than anybody else. But when we were lost, we thought that way. We, we thought we were better than that person over there. That wine, no one the bridge, we thought that. But you know, the Lord showed me, he says, he showed me, he says, it was, if it wasn't for the Lord, I could be that wino. I could be that wino if it wasn't for the Lord. So this pride of life, that's something we need to get rid of. That's what the Lord says. The last part of the verse says, it's not of the Father, but of the world. Meaning you, meaning you are not a Christian if you live this way. If you live, if you have these in your, if this, you know, sins, we're all going to sin. But the difference between us and lost people is, is this is not our way of life. And when we fall down, we ask the Lord to forgive us, we get back up. And we, you know, we fall, but we don't, sins of lost people is, is uh, it's, it doesn't mean anything to them. It doesn't bother them. For us, it bothers us. Like I said before, it should bother us. It should. This is what the Blessed Beatitudes are about. So if, we, if we're like the world and we, we live this kind of life, then we've got to question ourselves. We need to, we need, am I walking with the Lord? And then verse 17, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So how do we know what the will of God is? There's only one way, reading the Word. He's saying all will die, but those who live for the Lord will live forever. Now, when it says and they will die, we know they're not dead. Because everybody, everybody lives forever. Everybody. They're either going to live forever in the 
hell of fire? Or are they going to live forever and eternity with the Lord? But everybody lives forever. So there's no really death where you're just dead. Like the Jehovah Witnesses believe. They believe that they die before Jehovah comes back. They're just dead. The only ones that are going to live forever are the Jehovah Witnesses who are living when he comes back. That's what they believe. And you see why we have to study the word? Those people, this is what they're being told. And Jehovah Witnesses is a religion that they members cannot read the Bible. They, they are not allowed to read the Bible. You have to have a teacher with you when you're ready to read the Bible. Amen. Not for that, but amen that we we know better than that. Not you, you know, not just them, but the Mormons. I mean, these cults that are out there. You, what do you mean? Why do you think these people are following? Do they are they doing it knowing that they're they're, they're being misled? They don't. They, you know, they're not. They think they're doing right. They think they're right, but they're being told by men. They're being told men when you're when someone tells us, oh. You know, it's not, it's not good for us to read the Bible because we don't, like they do, only certain men can interpret the Bible. Those people believe it. We belong to a church where we encourage people to read the Bible. Like tonight. I mean, they've given me the opportunity to come in here and teach a class. The Lord led me to the, to the Beatitudes. You know, amen, we have a church that we, we, our, our, our book... Our study book is this. This is our study book. This is what we go by. The biggest, the biggest thing I'm getting out of hunger and thirst for righteousness is hunger and thirst to be like God. To be like God. And let Him, let Him show you. Let Him show you. Don't depend on, don't, uh, somewhere in Psalms, I forgot where, but it says, it's better to put your trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in the man. I'm sorry, it's in Psalms, but I forgot what, what chapter. But it does say that. The Lord says, it's better to put your trust in Him than to put your confidence in a man. And I've been doing this since home Bible study. Since I started my home Bible study over two years ago. It's been maybe three years. This is what I do. I give them all the scriptures I'm going to use. I give it to them on paper. And I'll tell them. I'll tell them over and over. Now you go home. And you read these scriptures for yourselves. Make sure I didn't make them mean something else that they that it, that's not what it meant. And that's the way we should live. I have a I have my pastor, and I have I have a teacher myself who I've been under for over thirty years. I don't just take it for granted they're telling me the truth. I check them out. I check them out, and that's why I can stay stand here and say my pastor is filled with the Holy Spirit because I check them out and. I haven't, I haven't heard him lead us astray yet, and amen for that. Uh, like I said just now, on the physical food and spiritual food, it's the same thing. Please understand that. This is exactly the same thing. We can't live with just physical food. We can't live that way. Christians, you know, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us physically, but to walk with the Lord... It's not going to do anything for us spiritually. You know, we eat every day. I'm talking about food. Okay. So we need to, we need to learn, okay, hey, this is my food. This is, this is my life. This food that I eat, that's just for this body to keep it alive. But my spiritual body, to keep it alive, I need this. You know, you know think about it, you know, really, seriously. What is more important to, uh, to the Christian, the physical food or the spiritual food? That is more important to us than physical than the food that we eat for our physical bodies. I mean, really seriously. So we need to we need to start looking at it. At hey, I need this more than I need this. Psalms sixty three one. It says, "O God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsts for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land." Where no water is, but of course I told you he's talking about the world. There's no, there's no living water in the world. So right here he says, "Early will I seek thee." 
So we, we should be saying, we should be doing it because the Lord says it right here. You should seek me early in the morning. Also in Isaiah 26, 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yet with my spirit within me I will, I, will I seek thee early. This has been a long time ago at a Baptist church I used to go to. We used to meet like at 5 o'clock in the morning to pray. The, the guys would, to pray. Man, you don't know what that does to you for the rest of the day. It'll, it'll oh man! I've, I've been in the men's prayer group before. It'll strengthen you. I mean, we like I said, it was five o'clock in the morning before we did anything. This was we had time to do it before we went to work. Man, that that was good. That was good. You know, those who are truly happy, truly happy, are the Christians who are hungry and thirsty, because we know this is where this is where our happiness comes. You know, my wife right here, she makes me happy. But spiritually, this is where I'm going to get my happiness. Through the hard times, this is where I'm going to get what I need. She stands by my side, and believe me, I need her. But when I have the Word of God, this is what I need. And we, we need this to be, really, to have the true happiness and blessings. To be hungry and thirsty, that's, that's being a Christian. Because like I said before, what is a Christian? A Christian is being Christ-like. And the only way we're going to be Christ-like is we got to know what his words say. You cannot be Christ-like. You cannot be a Christian when you don't know the word of God. No, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. You have to know the word of God. We, if we want to walk in the spirit, this is what we have to have. We have to have this. Second Peter, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. The Lord will receive glory when we grow in His Word. The Lord is going to receive the glory. In fact, Isaiah 43, 7 says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yet I have made him. Who in here knows, knew this verse? That God made you? I mean, personally, say to yourself right now, God made me for His glory. Amen? Yes. I mean, even though... We know what we was like, but now that we've made him Lord, he's made us for his glory. That's, I mean, God made, I take it very personal. God is telling me, Jesse, I made you for my glory. The way the preacher gets up there and preaches, you think he studies? He says he studies. Just a little bit. Amen. And the teachers, teachers that we're under, you know, teachers spend a lot of time in the Word to study. To, to get ready for a class. Now, it's not for pre just preachers and teachers to study this way. All of us should study this way. I mean, we can look at Jesus. Was Jesus a preacher? Was he a religious leader? No, what was he? He was a carpenter. He was just a carpenter. I worked for Frito Lay. I was just a Frito Lay guy, salesman. He was just a carpenter. I mean, Jesus was not a religious leader. He was just a man, just like us, had a job, just like us. His title was carpenter. You have a title at work, and you have a title at work. You know, we all have a titles. But, look, John, chapter 7, verses 14 through 18. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but, this, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no righteous, righteousness is in him. Now, verse 14, it says, it's talking about Jesus went before the church and started to teach. Again, was he a preacher? No. I mean, a religious leader? No. No, he went before the church, before the church, stood up before the church and started to teach Jesus. A man that was not, his title was not pastor, preacher, priest. He was just a carpenter. Got up before the church and started to teach. And in verse 15, it says the people were surprised. They were surprised. How does this carpenter 
how did this carpenter, how does he know the scriptures? He hasn't even gone... He hasn't even gone to college. He hasn't gone to seminary. Hadn't gone to seminary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're asking, how does this guy know this? But Jesus, they were amazed. They were surprised right. that this... Why were they surprised? I mean, he was a Jew. Right. They were surprised because he was a carpenter. Out, yeah, that and plus he wasn't a religious leader. He got up there with authority when he taught. Mm -hmm. This was not a religious leader. And they were like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't even go to college. I just shown right here that Jesus was just a carpenter. Mm -hmm. So what I'm what I'm getting at here is what I'm showing is is just not the preachers and teachers responsibility to study this. Okay? Jesus was a carpenter. He was just a man. Jesus in verse 16 Jesus, Jesus answered and said, "The scriptures are not mine, my words, but God who sent me." That's what Jesus said. Now remember, Jesus here on earth was a man. And in Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 and 12, Paul says, again out of the Living Bible, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people. Which, when Paul preached, you could see he wasn't trying to win the approval of people. He said, But of God, if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Verse 11, Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to, to, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach it's not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it direct revelations from revelation from Jesus Christ. Paul, when the Lord touched him, the Lord touched that man. Yeah. And he killed, and he prosecuted Christians. And he made a complete turnaround by the touch of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. In my speech... And my preaching was not with enticing words of men, men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of the power. We need preachers and teachers who are going to preach this. I mean, there, we have preachers and teachers. Believe it or not, there's preachers out there that buy sermons. Yeah. They buy sermons and then preach it in the church. A lot of teachers... Well, I'm going to get on that. I always try to get ahead of myself here. But anyway, it's just saying, you know, there's a lot of men stuff out there. It's from men. And that, like I said, that book, Seduction of Christianity, it talks about stuff like that. Well, look at them. Well, that's what it says right here. That's what men do. They use enticing words. And, and uh, But when you're not moving in the Spirit, if you're not moving by the Spirit, you are looking for someone with, who is an eloquent speaker. That's what you look for. Or someone who comes to you with... With a doctor so and so with all these initials behind his name. Yeah, right. Oh, we love that. The church loves that. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. They love that, and, and that's what they look at. Big money too. That's what they look at. They want to see how many college degrees this guy has. You know, how well of a speaker is he? Like I said earlier, look at Moses. Moses even said, "I'm not an eloquent speaker. In fact, I'm slow at speech." And the Lord used this man. Great, greatly He used him. So we got to quit looking with these eyes. These eyes tell us, oh, this man, he needs to speak eloquently. He needs to uh, have all these initials behind his name, doctor, so-and-so, you know. Oh, if he's got all this, oh, he's qualified. And we don't know nothing about him. That's the, that's the religious, worldly way of doing it. For religious people, that's fine. For religious people. For Christians, that's not going to do anything for us. I sat under a pastor one time, a preacher, and he was totally out of college. I mean, he was using words like I was like... I mean, he was just... Not spiritually, he was just saying words. I was, he wasn't touching me whatsoever, spiritually. Because he was using his college, what he learned in college. These fancy words and all that. Our pastor is not preaching from what he learned in college. Our pastor is preaching what the Lord is leading him to preach. For that Sunday. Exactly. Amen. Okay, verse 17. It's, it says, Anyone who wants to do the will of God, they have to know the Scriptures because they're from God. They're from God. And we, like I said before, and what she said a while ago, we need to know them because then if we know them and we hear a, a preacher up there, hey, wait a minute, that's not what the Bible says. Then we know it's of man. Then we know this preaching is of men. That's why, that's why it's so important that we be hungry hungry and thirsty for the Word of God. Because believe me, we can be fooled 
we can. That's why, I, like, now, now, the Bible does say that if it was possible, if it was possible, even the elect would be fooled. If it right. were possible. He, what he's saying is, if you're in this, it's going to be hard to fool you. That's what he's saying. He says it's going to be almost impossible to fool you if you know what's here. Verse 18, the man who gives his own opinion is looking for his own glorification. But the man who tells the truth, seeking God's glory, that's a man of God. And it says, and he's not a liar. If he's preaching the word of God, it says he's not a liar. That's what it's saying. So I use that, what Jesus did, I, all these, what I just showed with Jesus. Remember, he was just like us. Jesus was just a man. He was not a pastor. He was not a religious leader. He was a carpenter, and he got up and preached the Word of God. Taught. It says taught. He taught the Word of God. This is the only thing I read. I don't read other men's commentaries. I mean, I have, and most of the time I don't use what they say because it doesn't go with this. They, a lot of times they're using their own theory of what they think it means. So commentaries, commentaries will get you in trouble unless you know the Word of God. That's why if I go to a commentary, I'm not going to the commentary because I'm dumb. I know the Word of God. I'm not ragging here. But when, what, 26 years? When you've been reading only the Bible, only the Bible, I would say I'm a little qualified to know what's, what the Word of God says. And when I read the commentaries and I'm like, now I'm not saying all commentaries are bad. I'm not saying they're all bad, but be careful with commentaries. Yeah. Just remember, it's men's commentary. All right, Jeremiah fifteen sixteen, it says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. The word was unto him a joy and rejoicing. That's the word of God. Even when it's stepping on our toes, we still should rejoice. Like I said in Luke, uh, I forgot, chapter 4, I think, at the beginning, they wanted to kill Jesus for what he preached. And then he went somewhere else and, and preached. And they were astonished by the way he preached. People can take it, takes the word, they take the, uh, the word of God different. Some, some hate it. Some look at it and they rejoice. It says, thy words were found. Where do we find the words? Right here in the Bible. This is, this is the words of God. Let me just say real quick. The King James is translated, written by men from the Holy Spirit, this one. Any translation you have, any other translation you have is translation from this. And I, I can have a teaching and I can show you where other translations leave out scriptures, leave out just a word, or just leave out a whole verse. And uh, so tra uh, other translations, the Living Bible, NIV, those are okay when you're young and you're on milk but once you start growing and, you're on, and you get on meat like the Bible says this is where you can get it this is where you get the meat the they no, no longer can you take the New Testament and fit it with the Old Testament because they change a little word here they change a word over here and then they no longer connect so when you're, when you're on meat I, I, King James is the way to go I started off on the Living Bible and then little by little I started reading the King James and now this is where I'm at. But I tell young Christians, in fact, young Christians, I'll give them the Living Bible or the NIV because they're young and they, they need something they can understand because the King James is hard to understand. But once you get, in, get off milk and you're still on the meat, the meat of the Word of God, King James is the only way you can do it. Because like I said, when they change a word here and there, they no longer connect. And the King James, you can do it. But this is... This is the word that they found, the Bible. They ate when they were hungry. And we're talking about the word. It's a joy and rejoicing of the heart. You know, when you have verses like that say, love your enemies, you know, you wonder, well, how's that going to be a joy in my heart? You know, lo love my enemies. Well, they're lost. The Lord has blessed us by opening our eyes. No... Like I said before, I don't think there's anybody here on earth that deserves to go to hell. I'm talking about because of how bad they are. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't wish hell on anybody. Joy and rejoicing of our heart when we read the Word of God. 
I mean, it's all of it. All of this is a joy and rejoicing of our heart, all of it. And we need to learn how to read it that way. And I just used it as, a, as an example, love your enemies. Uh, for Sometimes that's a little hard to do, but the Lord does say it. And like I said, with the Beatitudes, if, you, if we take the Beatitudes in the order that it's given, poor in spirit, that's, that's number one. Until you get poor in spirit, you can't do any of these others. You've got to be poor in spirit before you even go to mourn or meek or hunger. You have to be poor in spirit because poor in spirit shows you where you're at and how you need God totally. When we come to the Lord, a lot of times we make it conditional. We do. You know, I, I can become a Christian, you know, I'll accept the Lord and all, but I can't spend very much time with Him because, you know, I, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and my work has me working these hours and and a lot of us make it conditional. Well, I do it, but, you know, I don't can know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's conditional. I can become a Christian, but, you know, I still need my time. Sometimes we go a little overboard on what we buy, and now the husband has to work overtime, or now the wife has to go to work. It's not the way the Lord meant it. Not the way the, He said the man will till the ground, not the woman, the man. And we get ourselves want this and want that next thing you know like I said the man doesn't have enough time to feed his children I'm talking about spiritually and then the wife a lot of time has to go to work when you're walking with the Lord you don't have to worry about none of that he'll take care of us he says seek me first and he'll, he'll take care of everything and he will we got to remember that we got to remember we're Christians our king is the Lord not the president not the government we obey the law, but that's not who runs our life. That's not who takes care of us. The Lord takes care of us. So if, as long as you're seeking Him, you don't have to worry about getting in that trouble. What the government does and how high the gas goes up. This is what happens when you hunger and thirst. You go where the Word is being taught. When you're hungry and thirsty for the Word, Acts 20.20, 20, and now I kept back nothing, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. So there were, wherever the word was being preached in the Old Testament, that's where they were going. That's where they met. And Acts 20:20, 20, 20, I mean Acts uh, 2, verses 46 and 47, and they continued daily. They continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat and with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. We have gotten so far away from the way the Lord wants it. They met daily. We have a hard time meeting twice a week. But they met daily. And what happened when they met daily? They added to the church daily. Huh? Amen? You know, that's the worst thing that ever happened to the church was when we put it into a building. That's the worst thing that ever happened to us. It would require more Christians. It would require spirit-filled, born-again Christians, like the Beatitudes. People who take this as number one. I have a, well, I had a home Bible study and then I started teaching here, but what I was doing at home, that's the church. I was just, and whoever wanted to come could come. And that's how the church is. It's in the neighborhood. It's in the house. And the Lord has blessed me. He gave me the hunger that I have for the word. He gave me what I, whatever I teach, he's given it to me. But we don't have enough men. They don't, they don't have time for that. That's what I'm saying. Christians are too busy. They're just too busy. And through this teaching here, especially hunger and thirst, we don't have too many people who are hungry and thirsty for the word of God. Because if we did, we'd have a lot more people here. I mean, this is a building. This is where a lot of people know we're having this on Wednesday nights. But this is all we get. We don't have Christians who are hungry and thirsty. I praise God for y'all. I praise God for y'all because you're only here because you're hungry and thirsty. All right? And this, if we had more Christians that way, we could have more home Bible studies. We could. And we'd be out on the street, on you know, house to house. Yeah. Well, Acts 5.42. 
and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Acts 16.5 And so were the churches established in the faith and, and increased in number daily. We can learn from reading the Bible. All we have to do is read the Bible. You want to have a growing church? Daily. You're being taught daily. You know, I, that home Bible study I had at home, I didn't have to do that. But I know what the Word of God says. We need men to be that way. Not The women, that's fine, but we need men that are going to be like that. Because that's the head of the, 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 the house, is the man. He made us the priest of the house, and we're the ones who should be doing that, not the women. Like I said, on Sundays, not just this church, other churches, I see the wife, the, the mother coming in with the children. No husband, no father. I see that too many times. Men, we need men in the church who are spirit-filled, who are willing to take the responsibility that the Lord has given us, and he's given it to us, and we're just not obeying it as a whole. There's The Bible says... There was places, you know, there was times when they taught all night. They taught all night. Now I know we, you know, we have to go to work and all, but if it's a weekend or something, like the Bible study, uh, if, uh, if it's on a Friday night and you don't work Saturday, hey, it's like Sunday here. Uh, I'm, I agree with John over there. This time, twelve o'clock, and the, the pastor has to stop. I mean, I'm just getting fired. I'm just. I'm hungry. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm over there moving this way, moving that way, because I'm just... Christians who have a walk with the Lord, they don't look at their watch. I don't even wear a watch on Sunday. I wear one t- on Wednesday. Well, they have one in here, but it, because I have a time limit, you know. But on Sunday mornings, I don't bring my watch to church. Because, I mean, you know, I, I could be one of those. I could he listen to the pastor preach. I can let him... For hours, I can listen to him preach. Because he preaches the Word of God. He's not out there just telling stories. or no, He's preaching the he Word of God. He comes up and works into his sermons, too. Oh, he yeah. comes up here and, and isolates himself in his office, and he works a lot on And that's what pastors are, are to do. Pastors are they're supposed to be in this. That's why we have deacons. Because mm-hmm. the pastor can't go around helping everybody, talking to everybody. That's why, we have, that's why they made elders and deacons. Because the pastor's responsibility is to be in this and, and be our shepherd and teach us, and preach to us. That's why we have staff, too, to help him out. You know. Well, that's why, we, like I said, that's why we need deacons. That's why the Lord said, I said, our pastor needs to study. He needs to study. He needs to study so he can preach to us on Sundays. Okay, in Acts chapter 17, it speaks about the Berean Jews, which in verse 11 it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonia in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They were open to the truth and they searched the scriptures daily. We should because we don't know who's telling the truth. Right, and I've said that several times. <laughs> we, this is our food. I mean, I've, what, this is my third week on hunger, hunger and thirst. Because uh, that's very important. That is very important. We need to, we need to search the scriptures daily, just like they did here. You know, they listen, but they checked them out. They checked out. They did. They did proclaim as Paul as being a man of God. So they would listen to him, but they would they would search the scriptures daily to make sure whatever they were being told was from the word was from the Lord. So those of us who are hungry, now that y'all are taking this class and are learning from the Word, we, you just pass it on. What you learned in here, what the Lord showed you in here, pass it on to a, to, to, to a brother or sister out there. You know, show them. Yeah, I mean, I gave, I've given you all the scriptures I've used. So you got the scriptures there. You got them right there. And so just some look right here and show them what it says. But we need to pass it on. The Lord, we're obedient to the, to the Lord because we, we want to be doers. Like He says, we want to be doers. So one of the things we do is help others, brothers, sisters. Now, um, the next one's mercy, but I'm not talking about that mercy. I'm talking about we as, as brothers and sisters, we need to help our other brothers and sisters who are not. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know, hey, this is the way we should be. 
So we need to be ready to, to help feed our other brothers and sisters in the Lord. Well, this is what you call discipling right here. Yeah, this right, we're, what we're doing yeah. is discipling. This is what we're doing. And that's what he commanded us to do. Right. And, and to be a dis- disciples, disciples aren't disciples and then Christians. Mm-hmm. We're all disciples. Mm-hmm. Now, this beatitude, if you're just a Christian and these beatitudes speak to you, touch you in your heart, in your spirit, then you become a disciple. Disciples obey the the word of God. So you can go from being a Christian just nonchalant to being a disciple. 